just up for you right now at 530, giving people $1,000 to get back to work. That's the governor's plan, his incentive to lure people who are unemployed to return to the workforce full time. Channel 3 New London Bureau Chief Kevin Hogan spoke with some employers who are struggling to recruit people. He is joining us live with the mobile newsroom from Old Lyme. Kevin. Aaron, we're in the Old Lyme Marketplace Plaza. This is where the Big Y grocery store is. And talking to the manager, Randy, says they have plenty of jobs here in Southeast Connecticut at Big Y. 30 full-time positions right now. In our travels around Southeast Connecticut today, we saw lots of jobs available. There are signs posted everywhere. Companies are hiring. The new Ace Hardware store opened yesterday in Waterford, but manager John Bogish says some people would rather collect unemployment than work right now. In this climate, it's been very tough. Uh, scheduling interviews, some people just don't show up. Um, and we offer decent starting wage and a good package to come and work, but getting it out there, people just aren't getting the word from us. On Monday, Governor Ned Lamont announced they'll give $1,000 to the first 10,000 who are unemployed to go back to work full time. So it's an interesting concept, not something that I really had much to weigh in on, but we'll see what happens with it. I hope it works. I do hope people get people back to work and if that bonus is an incentive, that's great. To be eligible, you must file unemployment claims prior to May 30th this year. Obtain and maintain a full-time job for eight consecutive weeks prior to December 31st, 2021. And not receive unemployment compensation during the required eight-week period of employment. We found plenty of full-time jobs available also online right now. What hasn't worked is advertising in Craigslist or Indeed. Uh, we've done radio advertising for it, and it's basically been a big zero. Uh, we haven't been successful in the conventional ways of looking for people. Bill Lilly employs more than 20 people in his successful landscaping business, which covers southeast Connecticut. He's offering a finder's bonus fee to employees to help in his recruitment effort. But Bill says those collecting right now want to collect. Hey, I'm on an unemployment. I'm making 700 bucks a week until December. Why should I come to work? And that's like, it's very infuriating. As you can see, there are plenty of jobs available. And will those unemployed continue to collect, or are they going to cash in and get the bonus and so they can punch in again? We'll see. Live the Mobile Newsroom in Old Line, Kevin Hogan, Channel 3, Eyewitness News. All right, Kevin, thank you very much. So we want to know, what do you think about this? Do you think a $1,000 bonus will help people get back to work? You can see right here, so far, 90% of you say no. You don't think it will make a difference. You can weigh in on WFSB.com slash vote now. Well, tomorrow, a big day in less than 12 hours. All COVID-19 business restrictions will be lifted in Connecticut, and those who are fully vaccinated can now go mask free in most places. But there are some concerns about this new guidance. Joining us to sort this all out is Dr. Cynthia Tucker. She is the assistant director of the emergency department at Lawrence and Memorial Hospital. Dr. Tucker, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, Erin. Glad to be here. So we have been getting a lot of questions from viewers. Let's start with the first one. If I'm vaccinated, how safe am I without a mask? So first I wanna say that vaccines provide a very high level of protection, um, particularly against severe disease, hospitalization, need to be in the ICU and death. Um, so it does not fully protect us against mild disease. So there is still um, the precautions needed to be taken in general. So we want to avoid high-risk situations such as travel without a mask. If you're in a correctional facility, if you're in a homeless shelter or a hospital or high-risk environment, you're still going to need a mask. But in other situations where we now have a larger population uh, that is vaccinated and our numbers in the community are significantly decreased, that it is safe to go, out, go without a mask in those scenarios. So basically, we can ditch the mask in some places, but we need to keep it on us at times because you never know when you might need it. Is that fair to say? Exactly. I would agree with that. Outside is our, still our safest bet. Um, and inside, we really just need to kind of use caution, and it's going to be a personal choice. Um, and that's really to um, help keep the people who can't get the vaccine safe, those children who are not yet eligible, as well as those who can't receive it for medical reasons, and particularly those with weakened immune systems, even if they're vaccinated, such as patients on immunosuppressive therapy or undergoing treatment for cancer. Yeah, that actually brings me to the next viewer question. It says, I am fully vaccinated, but say I live with someone who is immunocompromised or not vaccinated, should I keep masking in public? 
So that's a little bit of a gray area, and I don't think there's really clear guidance yet on that. I think erring on the side of caution whenever we don't have enough information is probably the best practice. And I think really you're going to have to judge what environment is that. Is that an indoor area where there's a lot of people or is that outside at the park or with one or two neighbors? Um, so I think that you do have to remain more cautious if you do live with people in those special vulnerable populations. All right, we're moving in the right direction, but still a lot to figure out. Dr. Cynthia Tucker, thank you so much for joining us and for your expertise. We appreciate it. Thank you.